things that you want to focus on. So from a do's perspective, we want to typically teach young footballers how to squat, hinge, lunge, press and pull. So those fundamental movement patterns. Uh, so um, not necessarily with load, but just getting them to control their body weight first. So things like a body weight squat, um, developing uh, stability and foundations, almost like thinking about it while we're as if the analogy of like developing a house, we want to have strong beams, strong foundation first. So I like towards, I've got a bias towards um, getting them into, once they've got double leg control and they've got good um, uh, movement competency from double leg, progressing them to single leg before increasing the load on their double leg and, and progressively overloading like a box squat. Uh, I would go start with double leg once they've got good competence and that might happen in the first session you progress to something like a single leg split squat then on the field probably more important we want to make especially with running based sports we want to teach them how to sprint uh, so upright front side mechanics um, making sure they're getting um, they're not over striding um, they're getting good contact with the ground they've got good connection with their foot uh, with foot to ground um, and their, their understanding of things like ankle stiffness um, and minimizing your hip drop when they're running. So looking at their posture, encouraging them to run really tall uh, and run smooth across the ground rather than sinking to the ground. So that's where you might use plyometrics to teach them the importance of, of stiffness um, and that whole analogy of a thinking of a, of a car. Um, our ankles are our tires. And, and if we're sinking into the ground and spending long time on the ground with our ground contacts, that's essentially like driving a fast car with flat tires. So we're leaking energy. So really educate them the importance of stiffness. From a skills point of view, to develop their just general um, movement competency and to challenge them from a neuromuscular point of view, that's where if you've got background in gymnastics, you could, or if you know of a local gymnastics, you could send the athletes to, that could be fantastic just to get them, if they've never done gymnastics as a kid, just challenge them in all different ways, like getting upside down, um, in a handstand, um, challenge their shoulder stability, challenge uh, their plyometric ability on the sprung floor and, and where they can generate some um, good short contacts and you can get a lot more high volume in. Um, the Olympic weightlifting can be a, an engaging way for, for athletes uh, and who knows when they, they might get drafted into a program where weightlifting is a, is a, is a foundation in the, in the strength and power program. Um, so to giving them good competency around how to uh, do a clean pull, uh, how to front squat. Typically, we want to steer away from your high volume programs, particularly in the gym where the athletes have got uh, a low training age. So making sure that we're you know steering clear of anything like a German volume training, uh, where you, you know you hear of things like your ten by ten. Stick typically to four to five working sets as a max of anything. Um, that you should be getting in plenty of, of progressive overload with, do, with doing that. And like we said, we're cycling movements a lot more regularly with a senior athlete. You might stick with a box squat all year round, um, whereas with these guys you might and girls, you might be moving them the key lift, compound lift, every three months, for example, um, depending on their age and training goals, of course. Regular strength testing, I would just use typically training as testing. So having them to have a training diary, and that's another good habit they can get into. Um, where they're noting down, particularly the key lifts. It might not be every exercise, your accessories, your warm-ups and all that, but just your key lifts of that current program, one that the program is focusing on. Um, so they're just simply entering their weight, the reps that they completed at, and, and the amount of sets. Um, for example, like on our program, we use Team Builder. Acts like a training diary, but also you can start to see progress. You can upload videos in there, so you can see movement, competency progress, as well as um, their weight um, than they're doing over time. Uh, if you have access to like gym aware, you could look at the, the speed that they're moving the weight um, as well, uh, if you feel that's necessary. Um, but typically, I wouldn't be doing one rep maxes with uh, athletes under the age of 16. 